Hi, my name is Pavel. I'm a music producer and sound engineer. In this video, I would like to showcase advanced MIDI generation and transformation tools in Ableton Live 12. I will be showing it in the context of my work, video game music. These tools help me to greatly speed up my workflow and avoid creative block. At the end, I will also showcase a Max for Live device, an extremely sophisticated humanizer that will add a natural and organic feel to my composition. Let's go. In this example, I would like to showcase advanced MIDI generation and transformation tools available only in Live 12. I will be working on a short orchestral sketch, something that I do quite often for my video game music soundtrack work. Here I have prepared a simple template. The whole ensemble, basses, celli, violas, violins, and some orchestral drums. I will be creating content for each of these tracks using native Ableton MIDI generation and transformation tools. All right, the first thing I'm going to do here is generate a chord progression that will be used as a foundation for everything else in this short track. I will start by creating a four measure MIDI clip, change my key to E minor, and I will try to generate a four chord progression here using MIDI generate function of Ableton Live 12. I will start with E minor, change the shape, add another chord, this will be C. Change the shape, add one more chord, this one will be F sharp. Change the shape, and the last chord will be B. Let's listen. All right, I don't like the last chord, I'm gonna change the shape. Let's try this one. All right, very tense and cinematic. Okay, I'm going to disable this track for now. I will use this chord progression as a reference for creating other parts of this track for different instruments. I will start by copying it to my bass line and generating an arpeggio that will serve as a bass line. I will open my chord progression, select all and go to transform. Here, I'm going to use arpeggiate the style, pinky up, transform. Let's listen. Obviously, this is too high for basses, so I'm going to move it two octaves down. All right, this is good enough. Next, I'm going to support my basses with Chili, but I don't want to repeat the same pattern exactly. I'm going to use another transformation tool. Copy the clip here, move everything an octave up, and here I'm going to use Chop. Now I chop my notes in two parts, adjusting the variation to maybe around 30%, so they are not equal, and create a more interesting rhythmic pattern. Let's listen to it in solo. All right, let's listen to it all together. For the next step, I would like to use my generated chord progression for the violas. I will transform the chords slightly using different inversions. I change the inversion. Let's see how it sounds. I like this version. Let's listen to it all together with the rest of it. I will bring it down a little bit in volume. The next part is a challenging one. I want to create a melody for violins based on the content I generated so far. 
There is a tool that can help with that. I'm going to use this chord progression again. Move it an octave up and I will delete some of the chord notes, leaving only the top ones. I will resize these notes to be able to use a tool called Connect. It will attempt to connect these notes in a melodic way. Let's try different settings. And listen to the musicality of this example. To make it less random, let's reduce the spread to two scale degrees. Change the density. And apply legato. Let's listen. Let's see how it works together with the rest. It's not perfect, but it definitely works. My next step is to create a pattern for the orchestral drums. I'm going to generate it as well. New MIDI clip, generate rhythm, and here I can play around with the patterns to see what will work better. Let's listen. Let's make it more interesting. stick with this one. Let's listen together. All right, I've made some subtle tweaks to this track behind the scenes just to make it a little bit more musical, enhance the drum pattern and added a choir. Let's listen to how it sounds now. It's not bad, but it can be improved by adding some human feel to it. This is especially important in orchestral music because we expect it to feel natural and as if it was played by real people. Thankfully, there is a great device that will solve this problem for me. Inspired by research from Harvard scientists regarding the significance of subtle timing variations in live performances, James Holden created a device for the Max for Live called Group Humanizer. It introduces organic timing fluctuations based on various parameters and creates that alive human feel to any MIDI or audio track. The device itself consists of two parts, the main setting control module and individual player modules applied to each of the tracks you would like to humanize. Let's look at this individual humanizer player plugin applied to my drums. Right now it's not doing anything. Let's listen. This graph here represents the timing. As you can see, my drums are perfectly on time. To apply some time fluctuations, I will switch to the main setting module. Here you can see the list of all tracks that I applied the player plugin to. There are four parameters here, timing error, motor error, listening and influence. All of them have their descriptions, basically reflecting different ways live musicians react and perform live. Let me adjust timing error to a value below 10 milliseconds, motor error to a very small value like one millisecond, listening and influence. I will leave it at one. Let's go back to the drum and look at what's going on with the plugin.
As you can see, the timing is not perfect anymore. There is one more thing I can do here. I can also apply random velocity amounts to the MIDI notes that are being played. This will add even more to the human feel. Let me raise this value. Let's listen. As you can see, velocity is also not even anymore. I will apply this to all the instruments. Now in the main control panel, I will apply different timing and motor error values. This graph represents all the instruments and how they deviate from the original timing. Let's listen. As you can see, all of them are organically uneven now, and the timing is not perfect, which creates this very alive, human-like feel. And that's it. I was able to create this demo using exclusively Ableton Live MIDI generation and transformation tools, as well as the Max for Live device Group Humanizer. Thank you for watching.